Hello world, my name is Tim Roswick. And I'm Rick Davidson. And we're gonna do a game design deep dive of Scourgebringer. Scourgebringer, okay. Ready, Rick? Let's do this. Is this made by the same studio that made Hyper Light Drifter? I don't know, but it looks like it is. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> it's got the same colors. I thought we were playing. Wait, wait, you haven't started up Scorchbringer. You've started up Hyper Light Drifter. <laughs> I love the colors, though. Countless deaths yeah. has brought in our new reality. I love those little skulls in the fire. I love it so much. I love so skulls. my first my first point here is this requires a good artist or many good artists to create this kind of looking art. So if you're an indie game developer and you're really into pixel art, then this is the standard. If you don't think you can quite hit this standard, then don't go for this look. But also this is, could be an easy way to make a cutscene too. I mean, it's just an image and it's got some text on it. Oh, you know? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is, I like this as a cutscene. I was always inspired when I saw Angry Birds when it had its one cutscene, just one image yeah. <laughs> that just scrolled across and there's like, there's some, there's some birds and there's some pigs and there's the story done. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scourge bringer awaits. All right, I'm ready to be the. I, am I the scourge bringer, or is that? And as always, we showed uh, utmost respect for the story that was being yeah, presented. We read to us. every little thing, as I always do. Oh, this looks cool. I mean, first of all, this game, you know, putting on the hat of why is this game good? It looks good, and feels good. Sometimes, sometimes as an indie game developer, I talk to people and they're like, ah. I don't want my game to have to rely on looking good because I'm not an artist. So it doesn't have to be about the art. We'll probably talk about the art and the aesthetics a bit, but it doesn't have to, if you're not an artist, don't stress. Make your game awesome for another reason. You know, one thing I noticed off the bat, this is just because I've been messing around platforms forever. There is a huge difference between how low I can jump and how high mm. I can jump. Oh yeah. That feels really cool. That's cool. So it's just length of button press, is it? Yeah, like how long I hold tap? the button and then I have a double jump. Yeah. So there's hold one and then hold jump, hold two. That feels really cool. This this feels solid. And I always love little interactables like that. Like yeah. little bell. I could just jump through that. Everything's intuitive so far. Um, this could be made made in Unity's tile map, looking at the way that it's laid out here. Uh, I've got a, a course that I've created uh, a project within that where it's a tile map course a 2d running around jumping and it's in unity nowadays it's really easy to make this sort of gameplay the the Can controls of the course. character that would that would be where the the love's been put into it but just the layout very easy is this procedural tim or is this yes uh, this is procedural uh i this just feels amazing this feels so solid i feel like i have 100 percent control of the character at any point and i notice it stops immediately when i stop um one of the things a lot of games get wrong and i think this is just because this game is on xbox too so they've been through the the process with the controller but the the dead zones in the in the in the controller man like a lot of people don't put any dead zone at all and so as a result if i go left and i let go of the the, the thumbstick uh the character can go back right from the bounce or little things like that but there's a there's a dead zone in here so, so for those for those people who don't know when you say dead zone what do you mean i mean um if you think of the distance between the joystick in the middle and a hundred percent all the way to one side making yep. it to where your character only really moves when you're past 20 percent or say uh, so it it doesn't because everybody has different joysticks right and some of them are are weird right. and pointy and point left and all that and i think dead zone so what you're saying is it's not the very the very moment you kind of t slightly tap you start moving that would be no dead zone but if you have to kind of push it a reasonable amount and then it gets going there's an actual dead zone in there where right. the controller doesn't have any input and that's one of those things that nobody will ever notice if you do it right but it just feels good <laughs> Yeah, it, there's also a really cool idle animation in here. So I talked a little bit before about don't worry about the art, but uh, you can learn from this in terms of. Oh, I probably probably don't want to demonstrate the idle while you're trying to clip it. I'm. Um, so I just. It's... It, if your character is not doing anything, then it's good to still have them have a personality. Like this guy's yeah. bobbing around, kind of like a Muay Thai fighter. You know how they kind of bob he around moves. on the spot. Yeah, it's like I'm ready. I this this game just feels okay. I just want to point out too, like this game really it it's trying to teach me stuff, right? This is the open tutorial, but like I kind of figured everything out. Like I'm I'm noticing that mm. as I as I point my left thumbstick, that kind of points the direction of where my sword swipes go. Yep. 
So that feels really, really cool. And even though it's like the same attack over and over again, I feel like I have directional control now, which I kind of do. And, and then and when I dash too, or when I when I attack, I I get this little bit of like floatiness, which oh, yeah. just makes makes it easier to hit stuff, which is really cool. Mm. Okay, yeah, rather than just having a consistent jump every time if you're attacking, it's a way to slow you down so that you can have more battle while you're midair. Yeah. Yeah. So this I also noticed that because those enemies were up higher than you, which meant naturally you're going to jump and attack. So the tutorial was training you, hey, you can do a diagonal upward slash purely by the placement of the enemies. Yeah. Out of range enemies suggest dash attacks to reach threats. How do I do dash attacks? RB. It's on the right side. Ooh. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Do so I, there's I a have really limited dashes. Like this. Scandals. <laughs> that feels like juggling, doesn't it? Like in a fighting game. And I'm this really is something... impressed right now. This feels solid. This is something cool as well. If you play a game and you look at what really makes a you know Street Fighter, what makes it great? There's there's so much that makes it great, but one thing that's really cool, a cool moment, is when you can juggle. So you you constant you keep hitting a, a character, like you punch them and, and bounce them up in the air. So you can do combos, and you might play that and be like, oh, that's such a nice feeling to it. How can I get that sort of juggling feeling into my platformer? And that's what you were doing there. You were staying airborne. And yeah. kind of bouncing from enemy to enemy so you, you're pulling you're learning from another genre of game but getting that same sort of oh that's a nice feeling i think the verticality is nice too because a lot of platformers focus around the gravity and the landing on platforms and the jumps and stuff but the fact that this mm -hmm. one lets me kind of i can fly almost it's flying <laughs> like, yeah 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 so it's 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 really cool like you know, it, this just feels awesome. different than things I've played. And now I can finally use this as a, it looks like an exit. Uh, yeah. Can you just do a double jump and then a dash? Like, is it essentially... Yeah, that's a what I just did. It's a, it's a triple jump, basically. Yeah, so. jump, jump, dash. Okay. Yeah, that moment there, that, like, you're airborne, you're flying. Yeah, that, that feels, that's the juggling kind of feel. I think. A little bit different to juggling, but it does have that feel to it. It's clear who the enemy is as well. He's got an exclamation mark over the top. So, I, I like that. Okay, so I, I just learned I can stun him with Y. Okay. Which knocks him. Okay. And what's the exclamation mark showing? That they're about to attack? attack or they're just enemies? You know, I don't know. That's actually something I don't think was super clear. Sometime when you do your playtesting, you know, if you're making a game and, and you're getting people sitting down, they're like, <clears throat> who are these guys? Are they goodies? Are they baddies? Are yeah. they enemies? Sometimes you have to put a little bit of that feedback to the player to know this is the guy to attack. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with the exclamation marks. Fire bullets with energy. Oh. Use oh, man. combat force to refill blast. Okay. So how do I do that? So reloading. How do I shoot bullets? What's that oh, little number above your head there? Oh, I gotta, I gotta hit enemies to refill oh, the bar, it. and then I reload. That's interesting, oh, so it uses melee combat to reload your gun, and then I use mm. RT. Oh, I see. Uh, That's another, yeah. <clears throat> so from a, if we put our game mechanic hat on, if you say, once we gave the player a gun, all they did was they just wanted to shoot. How can we limit the amount of bullets that you get? We can have pickups. That's one way of doing it. But then that becomes very um, level design based, doesn't it? If you want to have a procedural game like this, where every you know every playthrough is different, every map is different, then build it into the mechanic where you recharge your bullets based upon being forced to actually engage in combat. That yeah. also that also means the combat mechanic, the the slashing mechanic, doesn't go out of style people right. don't ignore it once they get the gun it's got a good synergy to it i like that though because i mean if you had a regular like gun system in this it might feel disconnected from the game sort of but the yeah. fact that melee recharges bullets and then you shoot bullets to kill ranged enemies and then melee yeah. it's like a back and forth type of deal is there a loop there so what do the bullets do oh okay cool uh, gifted by blood and it's marked blood, blood is, is power, power. Thou shalt okay. seek its power. Yeah. Let's do it. 
Was there any voiceover during that? No. Oh, okay. I, I don't mind the just read it, because different people read at different speeds. So I, I would just like skim, 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 got it cool next. But if you have the, the voice actor, sometimes it slows you down. Yeah. Like, in the beginning, there was, and you're like, oh. It's easier to localize, too. You can just do text. It is. Stuff. It is. But I, I think most people don't. Um, that text is okay. But there's a little bit of, you know, oh, I play AAA games, and they always have a voice actor, so maybe I should do that as well. Don't make your game based upon what AAA games do. It's a different type of game, different experience, different budget as well. So yeah, yeah don't sweat that if you don't have um, voice acting. Another thing that I noticed that I just noticed in a lot of games is that the second I move the mouse, the little mouse cursor appears. The second I use the uh, controller, it disappears. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it, it knows what input device I'm using and it's adapting to me, which is nice. Um, also, so, the, the the key changes as I use the mouse here, and then when I use the mm. controller. It oh the yeah, it, it dynamically knows whether you're using yeah. the mouse or the controller. Yeah. Okay. Is so. your does your character have like a big white afro? Is that or is it fire? <laughs> is uh, or smoke <clears throat> or uh, you know, it's carrying around a, a marshmallow on it. Looks like uh, he's wearing one of those huge Rastafarian <laughs> kind of hats, but a white one of them. This combat yes, just feels. See, this is technically a platformer, I guess, or a side scroller, but this just feels. It doesn't feel like. It. It's a it's a mashup though, isn't it? Because yeah. of the amount of the amount of kind of bullet hell stuff that's going on, it's not a purely platformer. No, and I think it uses it does it it makes very good use of vertical space, which not mm. a lot of platformers do. And if you think about it, that makes sense because a lot of platformers with strong gravity or whatever they they limit where you can go or they limit on how often yeah. you gotta have platforms to jump on but I have a lot of options with that that amount of space that I can travel how would we I don't know if you know a lot about this I, I don't know a lot from the technical aspect but what's the oh the chiming tree okay. hang on a minute hold that thought oh that guy's cool cool character design cop are you a new faded that's grand Waiting attorney for a tree. Who am I? I guess I'm from Expedition 6 or 16. What was this place? The Great Chiming Tree. It's the reason you arrived here. The reason you arrived, I guess. I can't remember why I'm here. I must help. Blood. Blood is power. Okay. Use this. Ooh. Oh. Skill tree. We all love upgrades. Fast travel room from the map. Gives me uh, a permanent. I'll take the permanent so, XP. So this is this is a classic game mechanic. Or, or feature, I guess, of a procedurally generated game, you still need to have some progression somewhere. And if you want people to have multiple playthroughs, every time it's different, every time it's exciting, it's very hard to bake in player progression within that moment. Some games do it okay. You know, you play for, what was that just now? You were playing for 10 minutes. You might have had player progression within there, but often it's pulled out into the meta game. So if you were to play this game for, I don't know, 20 hours, you might have leveled up all the things you can level up and unlock all the things you can unlock. And so each time you play through, you've got a different thing that you can access. I, I'm not sure, I'm guessing that's what it was doing with the skill tree. Did that, is that what it yeah, looked like? Yeah, yeah, and I upgrade. So I but I like how quick that whole loop was. Like I, I, I play, I fight a bunch of dudes, I upgrade stuff and then I play again. And I love how seamless it was too because I felt like I never really left the world so it didn't really break my immersion at all. Because mm. uh, I'm still controlling the character, right? Um, Necrodancer did that, which I thought was pretty cool. Crypto the Necrodancer, which is a, a roguelike thing in a while ago. Um, even how you select the upgrades, you have to do it with your character and move physically to the location. Okay, Which yeah. is kind of cool. Okay, is this a dead you end? You need to go left. Yeah. Gotta follow those little arrows. Oh, is that what those are for? Oh. <laughs> those little arrows. It's amazing on what what you can really miss. You know, like when you're when you're running around, shooting stuff, smashing stuff. Mm. Like especially yeah. things like health. I love how it exaggerates the entire background when I get hit. Yeah. Because it's really easy for me to miss the fact that I got hit. Like let me let me get hit. Do you see how the whole yeah. background lit up? Yeah. I can't miss that. It's just really hard for me to miss that. 
because if it was just something on the HUD up in the top left, you know, it's you're not looking at that as you're right. like, waiting, waiting your war. Yeah. Uh, and if it's if it's a different colour little explosion around you, you're not going to see that. So yeah, if it's an important moment, if the player needs to know it, then make sure they don't miss it. There's no way of missing that health. So it's pulsing why is now the that I'm low health. Oh yeah. Really Which is even health. better because now I'm like that made me realise I was low health. <laughs> And, and again, usually the way you'd discover this is you would make your game and players would be like, oh, I didn't know I was getting hit. Yeah, how did I die? And if die? they're saying or, that, yeah, yeah, how did I die? Was I dying? Oh, I feel robbed or cheated. Then you need to say, right, now we need to spend some time to to work on that, to make it really clear to the player. So fast travel or a wave attack upon landing the ground from a dash? I'm gonna take a wave attack. Oh, I don't have any points. I okay, so I don't, don't know any. how I get points. Probably by grinding. Yeah, awesome. I probably just keep. But I, I love, I love this loop. This mm. there's some loops that break you out of it, and there's some loops that keep you going. Darkest Dungeon is a great example of stuff like that. Just it, it the loop is so intertwined in with the gameplay that like the upgrade stuff keeps you kind of going. Um, mm. This game does that really really well too. Like. It's like, oh, that's the whole thing. You, you kill stuff and then you die and then you upgrade stuff and you kill stuff and you die. Yeah. And you might have you might have missed it as well, but when you were in that room battling, the doors got locked. So yeah. you couldn't escape. You can't just you can't just speed run through the game. So again, technically the term for that would be gating, where you put a gate up and the player can't go in a particular place until you say, I'm ready for you to go there. Often you do that when the player gets past the checkpoint and you don't want them to go backwards. So maybe they can slide down the, the cliff or the waterfall and they physically can't get back to where they've been. But in this instance, they just lock the doors. Lost I believe soul. there are... Wander the shifting wells, my own assistance. Wandering Merchant. Oh. Kind of point. reminds me, the game reminds me a little bit of Enter the Gungeon. Um, yeah. But instead of Enter the Gungeon's like, you know, the top down um, twin stick shooter type thing, this is a little bit obviously more of a gravity based <laughs> side plan. What's Cucumber. Up? Disgusting. Oh. Please make it disappear. I can buy it uh, for 25 we, blood. Well, you have to buy it. You have. How are you going to get? That's the only thing I can afford anyway. So. A little bit of funny. Yeah. I like that. That's a little bit of humor in a game. Yeah. Games is too, some games, game developers make them so serious. As indie developers were like, this game, I need to put my love and my heart into it. And it becomes sort of more like a university thesis. I'm like, oh, man, it's supposed to be fun. Okay. I just noticed something that's really, really important. There is auto aim when I am near an enemy and I press the hit button. It sends ah, me toward them. And I did not notice you. that. I was just like, wow, I'm really good at this game. <laughs> I got this down. Like, I'm great at this. And I just now noticed that the game was like kind of automatically sending me towards the enemies. And mm. that feels fantastic. I just picked up a health, a max HP upgrade. So do you think this game would be awesome or as awesome no that's the wrong way of phrasing it do you think this game would still be like wow i'm loving this game if the art didn't look quite so snappy if it was more bland or more samey or you know obviously wasn't as, the enemies didn't look as awesome you know i feel like it would be easier to find flaws with it if it wasn't so beautiful i just think that's how it works out you know i think it still feels solid um there animation has a big effect on feel too like the yeah. fact that his animation responds to everything that i do and it's climbing walls and jumping that's a big part of this game feel so without the graphics and the animator and all that you you lose a chunk of it i would say probably 30 percent. that's not scientific yeah. at all but like it's a it's a chunk right mm -hmm. uh but then too i think i think just as humans we have this this idea that things that look pretty or look good are high quality <laughs> So yeah. I, I think it definitely, it helps a lot. I think it would, th mechanically it's very tight though. Yeah. Okay. Enemies are stunned for 50% more time or 25% bosses. Take 10% more damage while stunned. Reloading energy slowly recharges automatically while there are enemies around. Weapons drop randomly upon fin Oh, weapons can drop? I can get new weapons? Let's go with that. That's cool. And it, it's interesting as well, you're talking about the animation of the character. 
the character in this game is the star of the show. It's where your eye goes to. It's what you're looking at the entire time you're playing. You're always looking at your characters. They yeah. run around. So that can become a good way to make um, scope-based decisions. You can tell yourself, what should I spend my time on in the game? Should I make a thousand enemies? Or should I make a whole bunch more, or put a whole bunch more love into the animation of the character? Yeah. And you can, you can make those decisions based on, well, what's the start of the show? What are people going to be looking at? What's going to be the, the, um, the thing you need to highlight over and over and over again? I agree. I, I think you should really think about that stuff in general. That looks scary. Disposing of a threat might have unblocked an exit. Oh, was that like a boss? Looks a bit boss bossish. Strange egg gives back two HP. Okay, I'll take that. This also is not a game that's been made by one guy in a year. So this is this has got a team of people working on it. I don't know how many. I'm just guessing. But if I was to guess, I'd say at least four or five people working on this for at least a year or two. Yeah. It is, just you know, to get is, it mechanically it's, it's, this tight and artistically this beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's gonna take a lot of people. Yeah, because it's if you look at each of the enemies, there's not just here's an enemy, but there's also multiple frames of movement, multiple frames probably of attack as well. So I'm just gonna watch one of the those blue enemies there. Okay, so they've got just their idol. That's that's a few frames of, of pixel art that's been created, and then their shoot, I think, is another few frames. And then if you hit them, is there any sort of different okay, they blink. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. that's a good way to, to reuse you know, change the color as opposed to having to redraw the entire thing. But that was, you know, I'm guessing maybe 10, 15 individual frames of pixel art. That's been you know what's interesting? And I, I think this just is a good, a good thing on the developer's part too, is like, I feel really badass as a player. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. if I'm being honest, I'm kind of button mashing. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the same thing I do in fighting games, right? Like I'm yeah. just I'm running around smashing A and X and occasionally pressing LB with just yeah. and it's like auto aiming to the enemies. And like if you put this on paper, you say I want to make a game where you can just smash the buttons and it auto kills the enemies. That sounds really boring. Yeah. Right? But through mechanical tightness, through synergy of the systems, through beautiful art, through perfect animation, through really good sound effects. You take that system and you make it feel awesome. So when people talk about mechanics, is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? The answer is, it really depends. <laughs> you can never, yeah. like it takes, it takes a lot of stuff to figure out the game feel. A lot goes into that and you can tell like that this game has just a ton of that. I think the answer is as well, you're not making a game design, you're not selling a game design document. And right. a lot of, I, I hear a lot of people like, oh, I need a template for a game design document. Why? Well, because I need to make a game design. Why? Like, what are you trying to, what's your reason for doing that? If you're working on a big team, the programmer needs to know, okay, where's where's all the information I need to be crafting yeah. here or creating? But if, if you're not, if you're working on a smaller team, don't worry about the document. Just get in there and make it so it feels good. And that didn't quite feel good. Let's let's have him jump quicker. Okay, that, that was better. Let's make him, you know, you can juggle, you can double, triple, quadruple jump. Like just right. play around with it. Because just designing it in your head doesn't make for a good game. You've got to get into the engine and prove Exactly. It. And there are things that you'll never be able to write down in a document that are completely obvious. Like I'm going to point something else out here. When I hit an enemy, do you notice? Do you notice how there's a, a a lag? Everybody pauses for like a half a second when I hit an enemy. The entire, the entire Look. game. I maybe I didn't wow. show that off well because I died in a bad at games. But okay, well, <laughs> everything pauses, and most people will never notice that, right? And you put that in a yeah. design document. It's like, wait, why would you pot? That's gonna make it feel laggy, right? Yeah. But actually, it makes my hits feel really good. It rewards yeah. me for doing extra and hitting damage, right? Like, and it feels awesome. And it's most, it's one, again, it's one of those things that nobody will like ever know mm. if you do it right. But, yeah, game feel. Game feel yeah. is, yeah. And if, if you're out there, if you're out there working on your game, then think of what you can take out of a game like this as idea, as inspiration. When you connect with your enemy, what could you do in your game? When the player takes damage, what could you do in your game? More than just, I'm going to make a number go down or I'm just going to put a flash on the screen. You can have things speed up, slow down, sound effects, 
special effects, particle effects. Uh, you can just innovate on that. that. That's the moment, that's the place where you can innovate, I think. So it feels a little bit different to every other game. One last little thing before we wrap up here. I just, I like yeah. that this guy says different stuff every time I come back here. Yeah. It's, it's got kind of a cool progression to it, which I don't know what he's for. I don't know if he's going to be a story guy or he's going to sell me stuff or what, but I just think that's cool how he like, he'll tell me different stuff. And then I've got this thing where I can upgrade and then I just kind of keep doing this whole loop. And I, I honestly, I'd be down for this for another hour too. Like this game is, <laughs> is holding me. But yeah, Rick, what do you what do you think in summary? Like, what what do you what do you think about this? I think this is a really good game to study from a game feel point of view. Like, as you can see, you just want to jump. It's and it's just fun that, to move around and just. That often play. is enough to have a game be successful. Is that it's just fun to do it. And people don't want to put down the controller. So this seems to be what this game is all about. I like that the player can stay airborne. Like it's inherently a platformer, but we're saying as you're doing now, it's like, just fly if you want to. The player loves to fly and bounce and you know connect with multiple enemies and chain combos. Just let them do that. Like let them bounce around the screen. So game feel, just game feel, game feel. I could see someone has sat here for six months 12 months just like constantly tweaking it tweaking it tweaking and adding to it the art obviously is cool the aesthetic all fits together thematically it seems to to have a really consistent feel to it there's variety obviously being procedural you can play it over and over again i like the upgrading system to say why would i play it one more time and play it one more time that's really important to give some someone uh, people a reason to keep playing it one more time but uh, yeah, this for me is an exercise in game feel and uh, really tight gameplay core mechanics. Yeah, I, I would agree with everything you said. I think game feel is solid. Last little thing that I want to point out here that I just love is this accessibility option. I can set the game speed myself. Oh. So I can now have it go slower, wow. which means I can. That's really, really cool. Because I think one so of the rather, of my game was. Rather than saying, um, do you want to play it on hardcore mode or easy mode? You just slow the game down a little bit. Yeah. And this that's feels. cool. This can be relaxing. This goes from like crazy chaotic, I feel like a badass, to like. I can turn this almost into a strategy game where I can plan my jumps and plan my attacks. And I just oh, I thought yeah. that was a really cool addition, you know? Can you turn it down further? Let's. How low can we go? 50, we go to 10. Oh. This might be, uh. <laughs> but you can analyze the game design this way. Really? Why weren't we doing it? Yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the conversations about, I think the game slows down. Maybe, hey, this might be some real meta type stuff. If you want people to play your game and review your game and to talk about your game, this is kind of a cool way to do it. Sometimes yeah. if it's too much action, they can't talk about it properly. So if someone wants to say, hey, this bit here's really cool, you give the player, the reviewer, the chance to do that. That's cool. I haven't seen that that yeah. kind of mechanic like that. That's Clever. cool. You could change the text too because it might be hard to read for some people. So accessibility, oh, yeah. I think, is, is cool. But uh, game feel and game loop, I think this game does super, super well. And I yep. think in summary, that's definitely what I would what I would say. Awesome. If cool. you're, Thanks, if you're on my Thanks channel, head over to Rick's channel and check him out. Uh, and, and if you're on my channel, head over to Tim's channel, check him out. And make sure you let us know what your thoughts are on this game down below. Leave a comment. Uh, and if you got a game request that you want us to take a look at, make sure you leave that as well. Uh, we'll have another awesome. video, for, video for you soon. Sometime Bye, everybody. soon. Awesome. Thanks. Bye.